Is there more pressure as a coach or as a player during an Ashes? Oh, I think generally, I'd say uh, maybe as a coach because you, you literally, as soon as the boys walk onto the field, yeah. that's it's everything's out of the out of your control. When you walk onto the field as a player, yeah. there's pressure obviously, and you you certainly know you're alive. There's much more adrenaline when you're playing. Yeah. So from that point of view, you've got to get into the fight, and you've got to get into the action, and you've got to, you know, you're facing fast bowling. So there's that sort of pressure. But when you coach, you literally there's just so many stakeholders. It's li you, I honestly felt like I was working 18 hour days. Whereas <laughs> when you're playing, you do you, you train. And then, which is awesome. And then you go out and you bat for as long as you can. And then, you know, you feel five days. It's like you can switch on and off, but not as a coach. You're never, oh, ever switching you, off. You mentioned stakeholders. Uh, which of the stakeholders are the hardest to manage? I think, even though we're all thick skin, Vaughny, I honestly think the, uh, the media, because it's brutal. I mean, now with social media and... And even though we've been in the game a long time, it still can be, you know, it can hurt. And it can be, especially when it's about your players and you're trying to stick up for them and it's out of your control. And then it becomes like a bushfire, right? So I think that's a tough one. And the hardest thing was really, I was interesting talking to Ravi Shastri when he was the head coach of India. He was never a selector. And I look back on my time and that's probably the hardest thing in terms of stakeholders is selection because in Australia it would be the same in England you can't win you literally and I probably it took me six months to learn that because I took it personally I, you know if I picked you Vaughny I should have picked Tuffers oh. or if because you're from, because <laughs> you're from Middlesex <laughs> and you're from Yorkshire but in Australia it's you're from Victoria you're from New South Wales you're from the states and they're very parochial mm. and you can't win you can't win so after six months I thought you know what Okay, that's my starting point. You can't win. So I'm just going to pick what I think is best for us to win that test match. Right. But the selection, and then you've got the fallout. You've got to have the tough conversations with the players. Um, and that's part of it. You get better at it. But so I think the media is the number one because it's such a big distraction now. And then number two, obviously, is the players. The rest of it, you know, you just get on. And, was, uh, uh, was there one article or one comment that hurt you more than any other from the media? The hardest thing through my period at the end of my coaching was that I'd fallen out with my players. Mm. And that literally broke my heart because anyone who knows me, like my, all of them, and, and to this day, to this point, I, I saw them all, all this week, I saw them all throughout the whole summer. They are, they're, yeah, they're like your sons. Mm. <laughs> you know, you have four years with them, they're like your sons. And then I kept reading that I'd fallen out with my players and nothing ever came out, ever publicly about my fallout with any of my players. But that mm. became the narrative and that's the thing that hurt me the most because I, you know, I love my players. I, I still do. I still keep in touch with every, all of them. And that was the thing that hurt me the most. Where, where did that come from? Yeah. I wish I knew, honestly. I, there was a real, it was really funny. And this is all old ground, right? This happened three years ago. We lost to India. And a journalist rang me after that loss to India because, you know, and I, again, Ravi Shastri be the same in England. You're expected to win all the time, right? So we lost to India in Australia. And after that series, I got a phone call from a journalist and he said, uh, I'd like to do an article on you and your relationship with your players. And I looked at oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, awesome. And I honestly <laughs> thought he was going to talk about how we've got, even though we've won, we've got this, and he goes, oh, I'm hearing some whistle. I went, what? I nearly <laughs> fell off my seat. And then it was like, that was it. It just went, became this bushfire and you cannot put it out. And it was, oh man, that was the, that was the killer. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, as a head coach, you can't please everyone, right? That's just life. As a dad, you can't please everyone. That's just life. You know, you've got to make some tough calls, but that was the thing that hurt me the most. And then you, it was literally a bushfire. And, but like I say, that was, that first phone call probably came nearly three years ago. Mm. I reckon we lied two and a half, whatever it was. So, you know, it's all fun and... Because yeah. by the time you left, you'd just beaten England in the Ashes. You were test number one side in the world. T you won the T20, T20 World Cup. <laughs> nice. For the first time ever. <laughs> first <laughs> time ever. Yeah. So there must be some residual bitterness from that. Ah, uh, at the time, no doubt. And it, of course, you know, yeah, it hurts. But every coach would tell you the same thing. Every captain would tell you the same thing. We all go through tough times. So at the time, 
But with the passage of, passage of time, 18 months on, you know, I look back, we went through a really tough period. We First sandpaper gate. Yeah. That was really tough. And then we had... Because that's when you came in. So you were, you were picking the team off from its sort of lowest ebb. Yeah. And that was a great project. And then we went through COVID yeah. for two years. <laughs> you have two years or a year and a half, whatever, in a bubble for 18 months. So there's lots of pressure going on in that period. And then, um, so I look back on it. And really proud of those four years. And then as things are, we, we, we keep evolving and moving on. And the, the plight team's in a really good space now. And they're in a really good space, I think, for the Ashes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, there were some suggestions that came out in the press that your your style was a bit in, attritional, a bit intense. Do you think that that was <laughs> valid in any way? Well, that's me. <laughs> no, honestly. I'll yeah. vouch so, for that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll absolutely. That. absolutely. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. But that's my. That's what I got bought in for. Yeah, yeah. love that. And that's what I, it helped me with my as a player. Yeah. And it helped me as a coach. Like I've been, I was head coach for twelve years. I came in because that's what I do. Yeah. But anyone who knows me also is at heart. I'm. A, I'm a bit of a hippie, you know. Like, <laughs> but but when it comes to projects and watching the ball or getting into the fight with the opposition, you have to to be successful. You've got to be switched on and you've got to be. So yeah, absolutely. I'm intense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But that's me. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are really laid back, and that's cool. And I'm so comfortable in that because when I was at high school, people would go, "Geez, you're intense." I was high school, and that's 35 years ago. <laughs> so I've got to, I've got to get pretty comfortable in my skin. Yeah, that's me. But I also s say, uh, it depends how you um, define intensity, right? Don't ever mix up intensity with honesty. Yeah. Mm. You know, I, whether it's a, you are going so well, and I'm so honest, and yet so passionate. Or come on, mate, you could got to pick up a bit. Yeah, it's either intense or honest or passionate. So, yeah, but well, I'm intense, yeah, I you, am. You mentioned honesty. This year, I mean, the, I haven't been in a dressing room for, oh, I've been in the old social dressing room. I've had a bit of a laugh in a game of cricket or a game of football, but the the kind of, the modern generation players is a different person to when we played. Did you find that as a coach in, in terms of the way you had to manage them? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, and, and again, that's the evolution, right? So I started playing with Alan Border. My God, and Bobby Simpson. Like, if I'm intense, if you reckon, if everyone thinks, if people think I'm intense, I'm like yeah. one out of a thousand compared to Alan Border. But that's how I was brought up. Like, AB and David, but they did not talk to us. So, we'd have to have any honest conversations. They never talked to you. I thought they were taking their spot in the team. So, and, and this is life. I mean, this is, cricket's no different than everything. We've got, we've got our kids and their pressures with social media now. When we talk about the media and there's so many outlets, it used to be one paper and da da da. And, it's just different now. So, but that's okay. That's all part of when I first started playing cricket. I, I remember my third test match. I scored 63 not out and batted all day. You imagine that. <laughs> but over time, you evolve. So by the end of my career, I was a lot more aggressive and da 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 because that's how the game evolved. And it's no different than coaching or and how you communicate with it. But that's the art too. In, in, as a head coach, literally, there is very little cricket strategy. It's all about managing people. Mm. It's all man management. It's, you know, and I remember, we took go back to the honest conversations. One of my, the great experience of my life, Vaughn, thank to you, thanks to you, was leading up to the Old Trafford Test when we just had the Ben Stokes, which I'm sure we'll talk about at some point today. The Ben Stokes innings. Mm. I then have lunch through Vaughn with Sir Alex Ferguson. One of the great experiences yeah. of my life, right? Alex Ferguson, like I've. Studied him. I'm a coach, Alex, and within two minutes of being in this, um, we were, haven't even sat at the table yet. So Alex Ferguson says to me, "Look me straight in the eyes and goes, just remember, son, truth works." <laughs> I, I said, "What?" And I was with Steve Waugh. I said, did, "Did you see what he said?" I said, "Can you say?" He goes, "Yeah, truth works, son." Always tell the truth. I said, there's my next tattoo. I'm going to have truth <laughs> words. Alex Ferguson, somewhere. Alex Ferguson, so, truth, but it's actually true. Yeah. In life, there is no greater advice. And that's coming from Sir Alex Ferguson, one of the greatest of all time. But actually, it could have come from my grandfather. It could have come from my grandmother. It could have come from some of my, from Alan Border. It could have come from anyone. It's two of the most powerful words. Tell the truth. Yeah. Tell the truth. And that doesn't mean, sometimes people think telling the truth is being confrontational. No, no. 
Because I could be telling you Absolutely. you're the greatest person of all time, and that's telling yeah. the truth. Keep getting no. <laughs> yeah, so truth works. Truth works, and that's Alex Ferguson. And you ask about it, Vaughn. Even to this day, even with you deal with the modern day player or my children, I've got four daughters. Truth works. Mm. Tell the truth, and if that's intense, okay, that's okay. Truth works, he, and they're powerful. Did he buy you a nice bottle of red wine? I bet oh, he did. oh, nice. He likes oh, his red. Yes. Oh, what a lunch. <laughs> well, 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 put it this way. Put it this way. I missed the training session. Before the Old Trafford Test match, I had to ring and say, sorry guys, I'm not coming to training. Steve Waugh and I had come over with us as a mentor coach. Assistant coaches, all yours. We are not leaving. Because I just, yeah. we had been drinking beautiful red wine. But <laughs> the conversation was like, it was so cool. It was so cool. And one of the other yeah. things he told, I, I learned from him, and I think about this in the, of me not being head coach anymore. He said, when we lose, I always go away and I look at, ask myself what I could have done better. Because he said, what everyone else does, they point at everyone else and say, da 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 da, you know, it's their fault. He said, but every game we lost, the very first thing I did, I look at myself and say, what could I have done better?